Stuart Dryberg is an Oscar nominee for The Piano, an Emmy nominee for Boardwalk Empire. Other projects have included The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Ben is back and his new project is the blockbuster video game adaptation Fallout on Prime Video. I guess, Stuart, I just wanted to start there. It's this huge property, obviously an original story, though, set within this world of the video game. So when you were approached for this, like what were your initial thoughts on kind of how you would want to tackle this? Um, It's kind of funny because my my initial idea, I, I usually when I do a meeting with the director the first time and I, you know, did a Zoom meeting with Jonah after I'd read some of the material, Um, I kind of made, and I looked at some of the playthroughs of the game and I made sort of some assumptions about it looking sort of treated and gamey and pulled a whole bunch of visuals from Pinterest to to support that idea. And Jonah, he said, oh, yeah, those are all very interesting too, but no, we're not doing it like that. His taste runs to much more, um, it's just sort of straightforward storytelling, screen storytelling. And, uh, you know, if you if you take Westworld as an example, um, you know, it's a very clean look. It, it definitely has, leans into the idea of the, the Western a bit, but... But visually, it's um, it's clean, well, you know, well lit, well photographed, um, and that's ultimately what we did with Fallout. Um, yeah. So I want to I, I kind of open just at the start. I love the opening or the cold open of the whole show is we're on the day the, the nuclear bombs fall. I find that sequence just truly amazing. It looks so great. Obviously, there's a, certainly a ton of visual effects in there too, but I just think all of it looks so great, and you have that great shot of. Wallen Goggins character like riding on his horse I, I get like it seems like probably a lot went into that but I'd love to hear you talk about that and like how did you kind of like approach that opening sequence because it sets such a great tone I think for the whole show and if you're a viewer you're automatically like I'm in on this so like kind of like what were the discussions about that well it's um obviously the, the 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 opening takes place in LA somewhere in the hills from the looks of things when all the bombs drop and um but we shot that in up in upstate New York in a in a postmodern house, um, which is sort of a hundred percent the way you see it, except for the direction beyond the pool, where we had green screen and blue screen to create um, our LA views. Um, that being said, we we had to do some very bright lighting effects to create the the flash that uh, the little girl sees um, somewhat masked by the flashes of the cameras in the party, but she w essentially witnesses the first flash of the nuclear blast. And um, so we had a huge rack of, um, I think they were um, the uh, cream sauce um, panel lights, I can't what they're called now, uh, on a big rack, like 12 of them, bam. You know, it was really blasting. And then special effects department did a whole uh, gag with air cannons and debris and debris pulls to to create that, you know, the, the shock wave that appears behind them. Um, so, you know, it was pretty, I mean, in many ways, pretty conventional filmmaking techniques being employed. Um, and the, the VFX purely being what you saw beyond the property so you mentioned like the lighting and stuff and, like the clean look you obviously have all these great exteriors and like the wasteland and then you have the the vaults and stuff as well and i yeah. guess like kind of which also were replicating outdoors as we see like in those early episodes too so i guess like how did you kind of like how did you approach that and think about that and like how to make that look like appropriately underground but also not like too damn you know like all these different things it looks really well it looks comes across really well but yeah, how'd you I mean, do that? A lot of a lot of the vault is actually interior. I mean, right. I know what you're saying. Uh, and uh, we based a lot of that, a lot of the lighting fixtures and the look of it on the game. That's probably the most derivative from the game. And I know Howard, the the production designer, Howard Cummings, uh, was you know paid very close attention to the the artifacts and the shape and the architecture of, of the game. Props department did the same. Um, but the the area in in our story, this vault has an under a farm, um, corn corn huge cornfield, in a sort of aircraft hangar sized cavern, um, which we mostly recreated um, 
in the uh, in the volume in the um Unreal engine um uh, you know volume led stage um and that that was an interesting challenge because we're 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 creating uh, what is essentially a fake environment but the first time you see it it wants to look real uh, and it does so um using the the um the ability of the um led volume unreal engine interface to to control beyond the actual image on the screen we had we didn't have we didn't have um video panels above the stage we had but we had a lot of uh led, LED sky panels hmm. which can can be programmed into the into the um the the video assets that you you use the 3d assets that are being used to create the images on the wall um so that that effectively became our sky um from a lighting point of view um and of course then you see the you know the whatever it is our midwestern landscape going off into the distance uh, but that's of course all on the video screens uh, and it's kind of i think it works pretty well you 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 your first take is, oh my God, they're underground, but there's this huge, but no, they're not. And then, you know, it's revealed that there's these old sort of 65 mil projectors cranking away in the ceiling to to create this sort of Cinerama scale um, image. Yeah, them. a lot of this, this show is great because I feel like you're, it's, you know, like you're watching, like there's, it's a big spectacle show, but it all feels like really realistic, right? Like in that way. And it's just like, oh, I'm totally buying, you're just totally buying all this stuff. It, I'm, obviously you have all these, big action scenes and all the these set pieces, but you also have these great performances. And I think the intimacy of those performances really is captured very well in the show. And it's like I mentioned Walton Goggins, I think he's great. He's basically playing a double act, even though it's the same character. How did you kind of approach that and to make you, is there anything you're doing? Obviously his performance is, is going to be good, but is there anything you're doing like to help connect those two performances visually, I guess that you're watching or not really? I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously his, early life shall we call it um right. when he was a you know western star and a you know pitch man for the for the uh vault tech um we you know it's very much in that world of of the western movie the hollywood studio um he is at his most handsome in many ways uh, and that contrasts you know i mean and we lit him that way you know intentionally so that when you saw him as the ghoul later on Hope I'm not spoiling anyone's story points here. Um, you know, and he's missing a nose and skins like parchment, uh, which is a mostly amazing um effects makeup, um, aside from the nose, of course, which was a green dot. Right. But, um, you know, you really you really get you you recognize it's him, but you you go, Oh my god, what what transformation has happened here, you know? Do you have like there's also a lot of slow motion, I think, and obviously in terms of violence and stuff, like does that change your approach at all when you're gonna do that stylistically? Or how did you like how does that change your approach, if at all? Well, I mean, it's fairly classic for sort of action and fight sequences to drop into slow motion at critical moments. And certainly like the the first big gunfight in Philly, I think we we played a lot. Um, you have to remember we we're shooting film. So um slow motion has a sort of uh like a very definite cost to it because you you're cranking the film through the camera at a greater rate of knots um but um but other than that no it was uh you know what again sort of classic action movie and western tropes because that sort of supports the the world that, that that's been created this sort of 50s era futurism that uh, was inherent in the game and we really celebrated in the series as well i think yeah you definitely did it it's a great series you can watch all the episodes now on prime video uh Stuart Triberg, thank you so much you're welcome